So I just came back from Samsung's event here in Nairobi and got some hands-on time with their new flagships, the S23, S23 Plus and S23 Ultra. Props to Samsung for such a well-organized event, from the food to the unveiling of the S23 series. And about the actual phones, instead of saying they are very similar to the S22 series, let's look at the differences, which bear in mind are very minimal. Like it's actually the first time in the history of Samsung that their flagship phone, which is the S23 Ultra, is mostly the same as the flagship phone of last year, which was the S22 Ultra. Okay, so starting with the S23 and S23 Plus, the design is slightly new. They followed the flat camera lens design, which last year we saw only on the Ultra model, but now it's all across the board with all the S23 phones. It's a nice design and paired with the flatter edges, it makes the phone look sleek while making it easy to grip at the same time. The actual camera sensors have also seen an upgrade here. The S23 and S23 Plus now feature a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 3x telephoto camera. The batteries have also seen a significant jump from last year. The S23 now comes with a 3900mAh battery and the Plus model comes with a 4700mAh battery. Which paired with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor that's powering these phones should provide a noticeable increase in battery life but of course we'll have to wait and put that to the test. All the S23 phones have the same LTPO display that refreshes from 1Hz up to 120Hz and they go up to a maximum brightness of 1750 nits. The S23 has a 1080p 6.1-inch screen, a 1080p 6.6-inch screen on the S23 Plus and a Quad HD 6.8-inch screen on the S23 Ultra. Now since we're already talking about the Ultra, these three key differences from the S22 Ultra. And by the way, this is like the new Note with the built-in S Pen for those that are into that. First is the improved cameras, as Samsung's entire promotion for the S23 series is based on Moonshot. This is what they're referring to. The main camera on the S23 Ultra is a 200 megapixel sensor. Yeah, that's massive and although megapixel counts don't mean that much nowadays due to the insane amounts of software processing smartphones are doing, just for context, the iPhone 14 Pro's main camera is 48 megapixels. So you might feel like, oh 48 megapixel and 200 megapixels, that's a massive difference, a 4 times difference, but it's really not. Where Samsung shines again is with the 10x zoom lens. Not many phones can yet zoom in optically up to 10 times and it's yet very fun to play around with. Second difference with the S23 Ultra is the processor. Same as the S23 and S23 Plus, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is just a massive upgrade from the Gen 1 we saw in S22. I mean, in terms of GPU, CPU and power consumption, it's a very capable processor throughout the board. And the third difference that is kind of harder to notice is that the sides of the phone are slightly more flat. Not completely flat, but Samsung has tweaked all the sides. The phone is just more rounded and boxy compared to before. All the S23 models come in either phantom black, a green, lavender or cream. And some people might say that the price of the Ultra model has gone up from $1099 to $1199, but not really because the base model of the S23 Ultra now comes with 256GB of storage. So they've kind of just got rid of the 128GB option for the S23 Ultra. To wrap up the video, there's no sugarcoating it that Samsung has played it safe this time. The S23 series phones are all really solid for what they offer, but at the same time, mostly the same as last year. So I guess, let's see what Samsung pulls off with the Z Fold 5 and the Z Flip 5 when those are launched later this year. Well, that's it for this video and be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think about the S23 series. Click here to watch my PS5 setup video or click here if you're interested to know how the nothing company has done till now. Catch you there.